Week of Sexagesima, Thursday. Good news for foreigners and Jews. Then she fell upon her face and bowed herself to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Ruth 2 verse 10 Dearly beloved, Ruth asked this question of Boaz, a faithful Hebrew man who let the young Moabite widow glean grain in his field and showed her great kindness. She was a humble, pious, hard-working woman who caught the attention of Boaz. Ruth had confessed that the Lord was her God, and she remained steadfast in her loyalty and service as a member of the community. Even though a foreigner, she was blessed. Ruth and Boaz would marry and live in Bethlehem. They would become the great-grandparents of David, who would be king, and would be ancestors of Jesus, the King of Kings, born in the city of David, that is, in Bethlehem. The Holy Spirit would cause Matthew specifically to include Ruth's name in the genealogy of Jesus. Ruth, a foreigner who found favor not only in the eyes of Boaz, but also with the Lord, her Savior and Redeemer. There was another foreigner who found favor in the eyes of Jesus. It was one of the ten lepers who had been cleansed by Christ. Then one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. Luke 17 verses 15 and 16. It is significant that the man who returned to give thanks to Jesus was a Samaritan. There were at least two reasons for this return to the Lord, one primary and one secondary. First, the true reason is that God gave the Samaritan the faith, desire, and strength to return into the presence of the Lord, glorifying, worshiping, and thanking Him. Second, there really was not much hope that he would be well received among the Jewish priests. The Levitical rites were for the children of Israel, and besides, the scriptures record that Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. John 4 verse 9. Even if cleansed from his leprosy, the Samaritan would not be well received among the Jewish people. He would remain an unclean sinner and an outcast. Moved in faith by the Holy Spirit, the former leper and present Samaritan returned to Jesus. He glorified God and worshipped Jesus. He knew and confessed something that the Pharisees rejected, namely, that Jesus is the Lord God. The foreigner bowed down and offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving, an offering that is truly pleasing to God. The Lord truly hears the cries of the foreigner and answers the faithful petitions of those who are foreigners like this Samaritan. He had done it before with Rahab, Ruth, Jairus, the Syrophoenician woman, and the woman at the well, just to mention a few. Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man, continues to do so. He suffered and died for the foreigner, as well as for his own people, the Jews. He rose again to defeat death for all, and that includes you. The Samaritan is in God's presence. He glorifies Jesus, worships him, and gives him thanks. Now he waits on the Lord. Prayer I thank you, O Lord, that for those baptized into Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, but that we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hymn number 129, stanzas 1 and 3. Hail thou source of every blessing, sovereign father of mankind. Gentiles now thy grace possessing, in thy courts admission find. Grateful now we fall before thee, in thy church obtain a place. Now by faith behold thy glory, praise thy truth, adore thy grace. Hail thou all inviting Savior, Gentiles now their offerings bring. In thy temples seek thy favor, Jesus Christ our Lord and King. May we, body, soul, and spirit, Live devoted to thy praise, glorious realms of bliss inherit, grateful anthems ever raise.